Welcome to the introduction of TOGAF ADM, Preliminary Phase. In this series, we will talk about how to create an enterprise architecture by walking through the TOGAF ADM phase by phase. The first video will of course start from the preliminary phase, which is the first phase. But before we start, we will talk a bit about TOGAF and ADM. What is TOGAF? Why you need it? And what is ADM? Introduction to TOGAF and ADM. The figure here shows the architecture continuum. The architecture continuum illustrates how architectures are evolved across a continuum ranging from foundation architectures such as the one provided by TOGAF, through common systems architectures and industry architectures, and to your own organization specific architectures. So why do we build an architecture? Well, the main reason is to solve problems. Here are some examples. Competition. Competitions are everywhere. In order to sustain, it is important for an organization to keep up the pace with its competitors. Enterprise architecture gives you a clear picture of where you are and what you can do to remain your competitive edge. Changing environment. Today, change happens faster than ever. Organization is under constant pressure to drive growth, retain customers, improve product offerings, systematically reduce the cost of IT, and to increase the overall project quality. Enterprise architecture gives you a clear picture of where you are and where you want to be, so that it's easier to understand how best to respond to change. Strive for excellence. From top to bottom of your organization, Every part can be improved to give your clients a better experience. How do your processes run? How your IT resources are allocated? Are they utilized in productive manner? All these should be revealed and can be revealed by means of an enterprise architecture. Enhance business outcome. Throughout the process of developing an enterprise architecture, you have plenty of chances to define or to reveal the various aspects of your business such as the business principles, goals and drivers, etc. By clarifying all this, you will obtain a better business outcome. Let's talk about TOGAF. TOGAF is the short form of the Open Group Architecture Framework. As its name suggests, TOGAF is developed and maintained by the Open Group, which is a global consortium that enables the achievement of business objectives through IT standards. It has more than 500 member organizations and a diverse membership that spans different sectors of the IT community, such as the customers, tool vendors, solution providers, cons consultants, etc. And TOGAF is an architecture framework, obviously. TOGAF provides detailed method and a set of supporting tools for developing an enterprise architecture. ADM is an architecture method suggested by TOGAF. It is a method for developing and managing the life cycle of an enterprise architecture and forms the core of TOGAF. Let's have an overview of ADM. When we talk about ADM, we usually refer to this architecture development cycle. An ADM cycle has a number of phases, starting from the preliminary phase and then A, B until H. Each phase is further divided into steps. And by performing the steps, the enterprise architecture will be further defined. During the process, a set of documents will also be created. We call them the deliverables. In this video, we will start from the preliminary phase. The Archisurance case study will be used in our video to illustrate the use of TOGAF and Archimate in enterprise architecture. The case study concerns the insurance company Archisurance which has been formed as a result of a merger of three previously independent companies. Home and Away, specializing in homeowners and travel insurance. Profit, specializing in auto insurance. Legally Yours, specializing in legal expense insurance. After the merger, Archisurance set up a front office as a multi-channel contact center for sales and customer service. The front office is responsible for maintaining the web portal call center application, a CRM system for homeowners, travel, and auto insurance customers, and another CRM system for legal expense insurance customers. 
there are still three separate back offices that handle the insurance products of the three original companies. The back offices maintain separate back office applications for their corresponding lines of business. Finally, a shared service center has been established for document processing. This diagram illustrates the changes that the top management of Arcusurans wants to achieve. First, they want to replace individual CRM system with an enterprise-wide CRM. Second, they want an integrated back office solution as a replacement of the separate back office applications. Let's see how Tugav can be used in enterprise architecture development and implementation. Introduction to the preliminary phase. The preliminary phase is the first phase of the ADM. Under this phase, we will perform the preparation and initialization activities in developing an enterprise architecture. Part of your work in this phase will be used as a reference in subsequent phases as well. Here are the goals of the preliminary phase. In the preliminary phase, we perform preparation and initialization activities to meet the business directive for a new enterprise architecture. Here are some of the activities. Define and scope the enterprise. You need to know which parts of an organization will be affected in architecture to be developed and how much they will be affected. Define the architecture principles, which are the general rules and guidelines that govern the conduction of architecture work. Set up architecture repository. Throughout the ADM, you will keep producing different kinds of documents as a result of performing the steps in the phases. These documents can be stored and organized in an architecture repository. We will talk more about this later on in this video. Activities of the preliminary phase. Activity 1. Develop organization model for enterprise architecture. We understand that a company is going to establish an enterprise architecture for anticipating requirement changes and business transformation. Here we need to understand which company units are going to be impacted. Besides, we have to indicate the level of impact. Basically, there are four levels of impact. Core, units those who are most affected and achieve most values from the work. Soft, those who will see the change to their capability and work with core units but are otherwise not directly affected. Extended, those units outside the scoped enterprise who will be affected in their own enterprise architecture. Communities. Those stakeholders who will be affected and who are in groups of communities, typically the customers of an organization, fall into this level of impact. Besides identifying the impacted units, you also need to identify the participants who will take part in architecture development. Once these units are identified, identify the key tasks throughout the development of architecture and state the responsibility of units with respect to the task. Usually, we describe all this by means of an RSCI chart. There are four main responsibilities. Responsible, denoted by the letter R. Responsible means the person who will complete the task and is responsible for the actions and implementation. Accountable, denoted by A. Accountable means the person who holds the power to authorize actions or implementation. Evidently, answerable for the correct and detailed completion of the deliverable task Consulted. Advice and opinion can be obtained from this person. Usually, subject matter experts take this role. Informed. Person who will be kept up to date mainly upon completion of the task or deliverable. Before embarking the development of architecture, perform a maturity assessment to analyze your organization's competency. In particular, area in turn assists you in identifying opportunities for improvement. The chart shows here is a popular tool to use in maturity assessment. Let's take a closer look. Here we have defined eight assessment factors. Each factor defines a particular area of organization's competency. For example, this factor is about maturity level of the IT function within the enterprise, where the IT system is well in place, well documented, etc. We can make use of this chart to represent the level of maturity in different stages. Obviously, the red ring indicates the current maturity. The green ring indicates the level of maturity we want to achieve in medium term. The blue ring indicates the long-term goal. Activity 2. Develop architecture principles. 
Principles are general rules and guidelines, intended to be enduring and seldom amended, which inform and support the way in which an organization sets about fulfilling its mission. Generally speaking, there are four categories of principles. Business principles, data principles, application principles, and technology principles. Let's give some examples. Enterprise information management processes have to comply with all relevant laws, policies, and regulations, and this is a kind of business principle. Data is protected from unauthorized use and disclosure. Obviously, this is a kind of data principle. Ease of use is an example of application principle. This principle states that the underlying technology has to be transparent to users, so they can be concentrated without distraction. Finally, the technology principles. Changes to the enterprise information environment have to be implemented in a timely manner. In order to clarify the principles, for each principle, please fill in the following mandatory information. First of all, the name, which is the subject of the principle. Statement. Statement should clearly communicate the fundamental rule. For the most part, the principal statements for managing information system are similar from one organization to the next. It is vital that the principal statements be unambiguous. Rationale. The rationale should highlight the business benefits of adhering to the principle using business terminology. Point to the similarity of information and technology principles to the principles governing business operations. Also describe the relationships to other principles and the intentions regarding a balanced interpretation. Describe situations where one principle would be given precedence or carry more weight than another for making a decision. Implications. The implications should highlight the requirements, both for the business and IT, for carrying out the principle in terms of resources, costs, and activities or tasks. It will often be apparent that current systems, standards, or practices will be incongruent with the principle upon adoption. The impact to the business and consequences of adopting a principle should be clearly stated. The reader should readily discern the answer to, how does this affect me? It is important not to be oversimplified, trivialized, or judge the merits of the impact. Some of the implications will be identified as potential impacts only, and may be speculative rather than fully analyzed. Here are some optional information. You can state if the principle must be fulfilled, or is just advisory. Explaining why changes were made, and the date of which changes were made. You can use the Archimedes modeling language to model the principles visually. Activity 3. Business Principles, Goals and Driver Business principles, business goals, and business drivers provide context for architecture work by describing the needs and the ways employed by the enterprise. In the previous activity, you've identified the business principles already, so now we will focus on identifying the business goals and drivers. A business goal is a high-level statement of intent, direction, or desired end result for business transformation. In this activity, you need to define the goals by describing the following things. Reference. There could be many layers to your corporate architecture, and each sector may have their own business goals and statements. You may enter a reference ID to identify and differentiate these sectors. Title, which is the project title. And of course, the goal. Business strategy statement. The strategy adopted to achieve the goal. Business driver motivates the development of business goals. Again, you need to describe the drivers, which include the reference ID, title, and the description of the driver. Activity 4. Develop architecture repository. Throughout the ADM cycle, you will keep producing some documents in each phase. These documents are known as deliverables. The deliverables are produced for approval and for subsequent referencing in other phases. Each deliverable is formed by several kinds of content, known as artifacts. There are three types of artifacts. Catalogs, which are the list of building blocks. Building blocks are simply things. Anything included in the TOGAF metamodel, such as a principal, a business service, and organization units, etc. Metrics. They show the relationships between building blocks of specific types. 
diagrams present building blocks plus their relationships and interconnections in a graphical way. So the deliverables along with the artifacts have to be managed in a way that allows future retrieval with ease. An architecture repository is to serve this purpose. The architecture repository acts as a holding area for all architecture-related projects within the enterprise. The repository allows projects to manage their deliverables, locate reusable assets, and publish outputs to stakeholders and other interested parties. Activity 5. Develop requests for architecture work. The request for architecture work is a document that is sent from the sponsoring organization to the architecture organization to trigger the start of an architecture development cycle. So in this phase, you have to complete this document in order to start subsequent architecture development activities. Results of the preliminary phase. The primary objective of the preliminary phase is for preparing the architecture development activities. So once you've finished this phase, both the sponsoring organization and architecture development team should be prepared for architecture development. And in this phase, the following deliverables will be produced. Organization model for enterprise architecture. Business principles, goals and drivers. Architecture repository. Request for architecture work. So we can now move on to the next phase, phase A. The primary goal of phase A is to initialize the architecture development. You will identify the stakeholders involved in the architecture, and you define the architecture vision. Thank you for watching this video. See you in phase A.